Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, I'm going to give you a quick demo of this um, setup that I did using Blender, basically, um, to be able to talk to Sonic Pi and generate some kind of noise or sound. And let me check if Sonic Pi is already running. So it's already running in the background and this was actually originally was uh, inspired by this uh, video tutorial by rbn one uh, He also have a, a website uh, for this, but basically he's, he created this setup so that um, Sonic Pi, Sonic Pi, the, this program that generates sounds, to control um, Scratch. Scratch program is another app for programming uh, visually, and he managed to get this uh, kind of running, something like. Uh, so basically, here um, Sonic Pi is kind of generating um, this value that creates a circle, and it's controlling the uh, Scratch app. We can actually set it up that way, so Sonic Pi control Blender. But in this case, I want it so that Blender controls Sonic Pi, not the other way around. But you can kind of create uh, two ways communications and making like a f uh, what do they call it like fit feedback loop between the two app but anyway that's maybe for the next uh, for the next one but for now let's see if uh, everything working so I have uh, in the preference I already set up in Sonic Pi so it's rece uh, receiving a remote OSC message and this is the address and the port number <clears throat> so uh, even with the Sonic Pi is currently not running, it's not running any kind of a programming thread. I can already send a message here. Um, I'll I'll prove it to you. So here we have a Blender, and if I I believe if I scrub around, this will actually um, generate some kind of message. Uh, let me try. I'm just running this guy and see if uh, we are seeing anything. Oh yeah, so we do see something here already running. So this is the OSC message coming from Blender into Sonic Pi. And uh, you can see that I think if I actually translate the, this, translate the Z, uh, we should be getting the Z value as well here, changing. So so what's actually happening, I'll try to explain it. Um, I'll stop it first here. So I have this uh, Python Sonic module already installed inside Blender. And with Python Sonic module, uh, the latest versions can talk to Sonic Pi via the US OSC so it's actually pretty simple to send a message uh, just one a single line of Python code enable you to send a message in this case this is the address slash an slash locator uh, XYZ and then I'm kind of sending three three array of uh, value from blender just location X Y and Z so that value coming in into Sonic Pi uh, using the same address so you can see it very clearly here and then the, the value XYZ it's coming in uh, live and as fast as possible depending on your computer processing I'm using this 10 years old MacBook Pro and still it's kind of working fine and see if I keep running the program it's uh, keep sending the value currently Sonic Pi is doing nothing but I get a quickly uh, change something oh by the way the here I'm using animation nodes and this this script is being run for every um, frame updates and I'm using this uh, animation nodes uh, distribute matrices and I'm getting this uh, circle and if I'm not wrong yeah so this is basically like a matrix for circular uh, distributions and I'm getting I decompose the matrix I'm getting just the vector translations 
and for every frame update it should get the vector and updates this uh, and pipe pipe the value XYZ into uh, OSC message for Sonic Pi so Sonic Pi itself need to have some kind of uh, program already running we can think of this uh, Sonic Pi in this case if I'm running this uh, program a uh, live loop it's almost like a like a node in itself like a box like an encapsulated little program that's running and listening in the background it's kind of like a it's probably not a very easy concept but if you think of it like uh, you're just passing a value from blender here using animation nodes and python sending the message as a string like this location xyz and this value is something that we can use for this little program this program in Sonic Pi is written in Ruby. Ruby is actually also pretty user-friendly language. And if you really want to learn Sonic Pi, I re highly recommend you to look at the help and then just study uh, whatever uh, provided here. I think it's very, very fun little program. Uh, anyhow, this little uh, code, I will uh, run it and it's gonna I can set it up so it's like using real time or like a BPM using this uh, kind of sp uh, speed factor. And here I'm telling um, you can see it's quite readable. It will sync with a message coming in into Sonic Pi from Blender. See a location X Y Z, and this is an array of value. And that's why here down here, uh, I'm actually using this variable and getting array number. 0, 1, index 0, 1, 2 and just using a very simple synth three different uh, synth sound and play the sound using this uh, property attack with a certain value of attack sustain release so if I now run it uh, command command S is actually stopping the program and command R command R or just clicking on this uh, run will run the program so now the program is running and it's listening to Blender, hopefully. And now I'm running the program. If I run this, hopefully we can hear sound. Um, it might be quite heavy. So I'll, I'm gonna reduce the, the speed factor. Gonna increase this. Let's try this. Make it full screen, usually make it a bit faster. So there should be some value coming in. And I can increase this maybe 0.05. This code can be updated in real time. It's probably a bit slow. It's actually run like a 10 or 30 times faster if I if I'm not recording um, probably it's a good idea if I let me check Probably I can make this a bit faster. Okay, this I'm pretty sure is sending value into Sonic Pi and just this guy need to need to do it as fast as possible. Okay, seems to be doing something a little bit faster now. Maybe this should be 4. This value I can change in real time and maybe I need to increase something. Increasing the radius, maybe the it's going to be louder.
or I think my computer is not fast enough for this demo. I probably need to have uh, my Windows set up to do this. Uh, I don't have Sonic Pi version 3 at the moment, but yes, anyhow, you, you can see that message coming in from Blender and it's trying to update it as fast as possible. If I increase this number, it's gonna. So the value coming in, and then for every value, it's gonna update and run the scenes. You see this scenes. Um, yeah, I guess um, if I stop the recording, it's actually gonna play the music, and I can actually record it. Um, maybe I should do that instead. But anyhow, this is the whole setup. So you make like a small live life loop um, program inside a. Sonic Pi, and when this guy is already running, whatever message coming in from outside, like from Blender, it will trigger a sound. Uh, I think this can be really, really interesting. Uh, if you want to give it a try, uh, highly recommend it. Um, okay, that's seems to be working. Viewer metrics. So this is the value. Well, the value can be from anything. If I if I am using like a Susan head here, and I'm using a object transform input get Suzanne and then from here I'm using Suzanne locations to trigger a sound this might be a little bit faster for Sonic Pi so let's try it like this Well, if I'm not recording, this is actually real time. So I think you can trust me on that. This um, setup is quite heavy. So the position X, Y, Z control the frequency and whatever here I set up. I can make it faster maybe. Syntax error. Okay. Let's try now. Oh well, I just probably gonna make like a few video demos of this. I might even maybe just write an article just to prove this concept. But hopefully this video is uh, interesting for you and let me know if, if you have any feedbacks or questions.